Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my presentation of non-parametric semi-supervised learning by Bayesian label distribution propagation. My name is Jonas and Müller Nutten and Gutke, and I wrote this paper together with Arthur Simic and Ricardo Campello. Arthur and I work at the University of Southern Denmark, and Ricardo Campello is at the University of Newcastle in Australia. This paper deals with uh, semi-supervised classification, and in Semi-supervised classification methods are specialized to use a very limited amount of labeled data to assign labels to a vast majority of unlabeled data. And generally we can split them into transductive and inductive learning algorithms. And after we have applied um, this transductive learning, we obtain a labeled training data set, which can then be used to train any conventional classifier for later induction. So most algorithms within the space are proposed as transductive learning algorithms. And in the transductive learning setting, we use both labeled and unlabeled training data to predict labels. As we can see in this equation, uh, TR is equal to L union U, um, where L is, a, here L is a labeled part and U is the unlabeled part of the training data. And the goal is now to predict the labels of U. And now you may think, well, isn't this just supervised learning? But in supervised learning, we are, uh, but in sorry, semi-supervised learning, we are allowed to use labels. Uh, we have given to points in U during this transductive phase to further label points in U downstream. So, and also notice here that we assert that the cardinality of L is significantly smaller than the cardinality of U. And this was this concept of having a vast majority of unlabeled training data. So uh, graph classification has been adapted to fit the semi-supervised learning problem uh, in noteworthy algorithms such as uh, LGC, RMTT, RMTThor, GFHF, um, which have been used in a combination with Laplacian regularization. Likewise, support vector machines have been adapted to fit the transductive setting in algorithms such as LAP SVM and LAP RLS. Okay, so our motivation has been to make a simple probabilistic label propagation model where we probab propagate label probability distributions instead of crisp labels. As we can see in this figure, we have three classes. One attribute um, and an estimated class conditional probability density distribution. If we had some query point here at uh, 5.6 um, and took the maximum class, uh, class posterior probability at this point, we would lose more than half of the label information, valuable information which could be used downstream in the propagation. Okay, so we argue that it might be important to account for uncertainties during transduction and to keep information on uncertain decisions possibly also beyond the transduction phase. If induction is treated separately and the classification algorithm employed for induction can make use of uncertain label information or label probability distributions. So we propose to propagate label probability distributions through this general schema which uses Bayes' theorem. So the conditional probability of class C, given point X, is proportional to F hat uh, uh, of X, given C, uh, multiplied by the prior probability of C over the sum of the probability estimate multiplied by the corresponding prior for any of the classes in C, where F hat is some estimate of the probability density. So all points in U receive such a label distribution instead of a crisp label. Notice that the user can derive a crisp labeling at will by taking the maximum of the vector yi. So here we see yi and the conditional probabilities uh, within it. So we have one conditional probability for each of the classes within. So to test out this general schema, we employed a k-nearest neighbor classifier to give us our probability density estimates. So here in equation four, we have our class conditional density estimate for class CJ. Um, this is equal to the cardinality of the set of points in the k-nearest neighbors of X uh, with, lab with the label CJ over the cardinality of the set of points in L with the label CJ multiplied by the volume encompassing the k-nearest neighbors, which is a k-n hypersphere if we are in Euclidean space, of course. 
Okay. So in this semi-supervised scenario, the nearest neighbors might not have a crisp label, but a label distribution. So we have to account for these partial labels. So we then update our equation four to sum over the conditional probabilities here and here. Using equation five in the proposed general schema gives us equation six, where the prob probability of class uh, C given point X is equal to the sum of the conditional probabilities for class C over all of point X's neighbors divided by the cardinality uh, of the set of neighbors. Now, how can we use this for label propagation? As we can see here in figure A, we have two classes, uh, red and green, and unlabeled is shown by the uh, color gray. In the first iteration, a point receives a label distribution dependent on its crisply labeled neighbors. In the second iteration, as we can see over here in B, the point is now labeled by two crisply labeled points, as well as X1, uh, which has received a label distribution. But in which order should we pick unlabeled points from U? Since we have to iterate through the unlabeled points in U and assign labels to them, we should do that in a carefully considered manner. So here we propose to weigh points dependent on the amount of label information there is in their KN neighborhood, which is the sum of probabilities over all classes except the probability of the unknown class. This means that we iterate over all points in U and find the label probability distribution and then start the iterative process by propagating these distributions in an order from most information to least information. And here we have our beautiful algorithm. So for all unlabeled points X in U, we index the K, uh, KNNs and the reverse K nearest neighbors. A re reviewer said that this would be computationally expensive or too computationally expensive. But when we index the KNNs, we can just add the query point as a reverse nearest neighbor to the points in its neighborhood. Thus, we don't need to do more than the cardinality of U neighborhood queries. So while we go through those points, we update the weight um, X, uh, so that is XW here. Then we pop uh, these guys into a priority queue. In our actual implementation, we use a heap. And then as long as there are still points in our priority queue, uh, we pop the point with the most neighborhood label information. And if it actually has any label information, its weight should be larger than zero. So in that case, we assign to it a, a label probability distribution uh, according to equations three and six. And then what we do is we uh, update all of the reverse k nearest neighbors uh, weights. And the reason why we do that is because they just had uh, one of their neighbors receive a label distribution, which means that their neighborhood now has a larger weight than what it did before. And then uh, we update our priority queue and we add the point uh, to the now labeled points. And just to have a quick look here, if that was not the case, so in the case um, where we actually don't have a weight larger than zero, it means that this point, as well as all other points left in the priority queue, uh, unfortunately uh, don't have any label information. And in this case, our algorithm simply abstains from making a decision and assigns um, the label that, uh, that signifies that this is actually an unknown instance. So we simply abstain in this case. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our competitors and their implementations. So both GFHF and LGC uh, are luckily available in scikit-learn, so we grab those from there. Lab uh, RLS and Lab SVM, they are, uh, were found on Hugo Perrin's GitHub page, uh, and they look like very reasonable implementations. RMGT and RMG Thor came from D'Souza and Batista. And finally, this paper was, in, uh, of course, implemented by yours truly. Okay, so to test out this algorithm, we took out five very popular datasets from Chappelle et al's Introduction to Semi-Supervised Learning book and added datasets from a collection by Triguero et al. In total, we used 32 da datasets with a differing number of classes, attributes, and instances. 
Okay. In our ev evaluation setup, we split the datasets into sets of 5%, 10%, and 20% labeled data. The rest, of course, is unlabeled. In each setting, we average the test results over 64 random samples. I should probably also add that we used Euclidean distance throughout the tests. We measure the accuracy on the crisp decisions derived from the label probability distributions. And remember, we count as error every time KNN LDP is abstaining. If we compare the evaluated algorithm statistically using critical difference plots, we can see that KNN LDP is on top when we only have 5% labeled data, followed by RMGT and RMG Thor. And notice that KNN LDP is significantly better than LGC and GFHF, LAB SVM using the linear kernel and the RBF kernel, as well as LAB RLS using the RBF kernel. When we increase the amount of labeled data to 10%, RMGT wins, followed by KNN LDP. Notice here that KNN LDP is the only non RMGT based method that isn't significantly worse than RMGT in this test. Finally, for 20%, we see KNN LDP fall a bit further behind, but is still not significantly different from RMGT. Notice again that KNN LDP is the only non RMGT based method that isn't significantly worse than RMGT in this test. Now, when we look at our runtime evaluation, we add a bit to the picture. As you could see in the selection of datasets, the largest uh, were about 5,500 instances, and that was due to the runtime of some of the algorithms. In the top here, we can see um, RMGT, RMG4, LabSVM, and LabRLS. And these algorithms were all unreasonably slow. And on the evaluated datasets, the difference was runtime in seconds versus runtime in hours. The slower algorithms were unreasonable to run on larger datasets. And the winners here are clearly KNN LDP, LGC, and GFH, uh, GFHF in that order, with KNN LDP beating the competitors significantly. So in conclusion, we studied an elegant non-parametric method with a clear interpretation in terms of density estimation and Bayesian reasoning here that performs as good or better than state-of-the-art methods on a large collection of datasets, even though it was put on a disadvantage compared to other methods. First of all, because of abstention, which as such will always count as an error. And secondly, we perform grid search optimization of several parameters for the complete competing Laplacian methods and the methods using an RBF kernel. And no such optimization, optimization was done for the k-value in the KNN LDP method and other methods using nearest neighbor information. So thank you very much for listening to this quick presentation of um, our paper. Uh, my name is Jonathan Pyllanusin and Gutke, and I hope you have a nice conference. <laughs>